Hello, Passion City Church. It's so good to be back together, uh, all of us um, in one gathering, although we're scattered all over the city today. And uh, I know a lot of you joining in from all over the world as well, but so good to be in church today and still in that New Year vibe a little bit. And that's why we're so excited about kicking off this new journey, this new collection of talks called Seek First. And today I was just thinking about one of my favorite follows on Instagram. And I got a little beef with Instagram because it used to be you followed who you follow, but now Instagram wants to put some things in your feed that they think you might like because you like something else. And I'm like, no, just wanna follow the people that I wanna follow, thank you very much. And one of the people that I want to follow is Zermatt Matterhorn. And a lot of you know that uh, back in the day, my friend Mark and I went up the almost 15,000 foot Matterhorn in the Alps, and it was uh, one of the craziest experiences of life. And I don't know if I'm ever gonna go to the top of that thing again, but I do love seeing the post every day in my feed. And the Matterhorn Instagram looks something like this. You can see it on the screen right now. And you know, I just love be feeding, uh, scrolling through my feed and to see this particular sight and then just to go, wow. I remember the day that Shelly and I and Mark and Lee got to Zermatt and we looked up the valley for the first time at that mountain and A thought, how in the world are we gonna go up that? How are Mark and I gonna get up that thing? And you know, pretty convinced that the trail up to the top must be on the other side because we're surely not going up that side. And then just seeing the stunning majesty of it all and imagining what is it gonna be like to stand on the precipice of the Matterhorn. The top, as it turns out, is about this wide. And um, so you gotta be really careful when you're up there because it's a mile straight down in any direction that you look before you hit the first thing you hit. But we went. We got up to the Hornley Hut, which is the place that you sleep for the night. Not much sleep going on. Uh, we're up at 4.45 in the morning, not because I'm a morning person and I love being up before dark at 4.45. We're dressed and going out the back door of the Hornley Hut into the dark to do the mile to the top. And you're thinking, well, that doesn't sound too terrible, just one more mile to, to get up to the summit, right? Yeah, but in that mile is 4,000 vertical feet. So you're talking pretty much straight up, and off we go. My guide roped to me, Mark's guide roped to him, our headlamps on pitch black, and we went out the back door and not the front door of the Hornley Hut because the other climbers going up were gathering there, and our guides, my guide in particular, was on a mission. We're gonna be the first to the top. You say, well, why does that matter? Will we get a prize? Uh, no, uh, we would just have the advantage of starting down the little narrow route before the other people were coming up the same route. And he wanted us to be the first two of the 50 people going up the Matterhorn that day. We were seeking to be the first to the top. We were seeking, A, to see the view. We were seeking to accomplish something that's pretty massive. We were seeking to do something that not many people do. We were seeking the adventure and the thrill and for Mark, all the nostalgia of having a family that was from um, Switzerland. And so there was a lot going into it, but now that it's 4.45 in the morning, we're seeking to be the first to the top, and I'm telling you, we were not the first two to the top. I think we were three and four, and getting there, and all the effort, the energy that it took to get up and get down was probably the hardest thing I've ever done on planet Earth, but it was all woven into this idea that we wanted to seek to be first. We wanted to seek to do something great, and I, I was thinking about you, maybe you haven't climbed a mountain, don't ever plan on climbing a mountain, maybe you've climbed bigger mountains than the Matterhorn, but have you ever had an experience like that? Maybe it was when you took that night class and it was the hardest thing you've ever done, but you figured out how to negotiate the schedule and make it work. Maybe it was the half marathon that you did, or it was when you took that big leap and said, I'm gonna study for the bar exam, or 
maybe it was you deciding with a friend or your family, we're gonna get tickets to this particular event and we're gonna make it to that city and we're gonna do the thing. We're gonna have this once in a lifetime experience. I don't know, has there been anything in your story where it was like, we're gonna do the work, put in the commitment, make the effort, get up at 4.45 in the morning if necessary, go out the back door if we have to, go straight up for five hours into the dark, but we're gonna do it. And I wonder like, as you know, we're kinda rolling into 2022, more of the unknown, is there anything on your list yet that's in a category like that? Like, are you planning anything in this year? You're like, Louie, nobody's planning anything <laughs> this year. You don't plan anymore. You just wake up and figure out what you can do. No, we're, we're all still moving forward. We all still have vision. We're all still making plans. Some of us, a lot bigger planners than others, but are you planning anything this year like that? Is there a Matterhorn on the horizon in your story, in your family, anything you're thinking about? To say it a different way, what do you want to get out of 2022? What, what, what is it that when this year comes to a close, that you, you want to say, I went after that? What, what, what is it on the horizon in this year that you're saying, I'm willing to actively pursue that? I was thinking about Shelly and me flying to Zurich, getting on a train, going to Zermatt, places we've never been, going up Zermatt on the, the train because no cars can go into that town, getting there, checking in, spending a week there, doing all the acclimation climbs, the test climbs, getting checked out by the guides, all of that process, all of the, the hours and the late nights and early mornings in the football stadium near our house here in the States for month after month after month after month, and all the energy that went into pursuing standing on the top of that mountain. And I'm, I'm just wondering, is there anything on the horizon in 2022 that you're thinking right now, I'm willing to put that kind of pursuit into that accomplishment? And then for me personally, I dial it back a little bit and I ask one more question and this is the question that led me to this collection of talks for all of us as we take our first steps together into the new year. Is, this is the question I believe, more time getting to know better the king on my list? In other words, on my 2022 list is one of the things that's percolating deep down inside me. Whatever happens this year, I'm willing to put in the effort, the energy, the work, the planning, the commitment to take the flight, to do the thing, so that I can spend more time with the king and I can know the king more at the end of 2022 than I know him right now. And, and obviously by the king, I'm talking about the king of all kings, King Jesus. He himself is encouraging us, and these are his words. He says, therefore I tell you, this is Matthew's gospel and the most famous sermon of all time, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Now, that seems like a throwaway phrase right there, but how much is packed into that one statement? We, we are a people that are immersed in worry about our life. And then Jesus just steps into the equation and says, oh, by the way, don't worry about your life. In, in other words, the thing that you are an expert at doing, you need to resign from that, and here's why. He says, don't worry about what you will eat or drink or about your body, about what you will wear. And to which I reply, well, it's important what you eat and drink, and it's important in our culture that you wear something, and so these are necessities. These are not options. But he says, is life, is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? And for his example, he just says, look up. 
Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spend, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. In other words, on their 20, 22 list are my life, the things that I think are important for me in my rhythm and in my lane. He says, they're all running after these things. But he said, your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things, what, what, what I'm gonna eat, what I'm gonna drink, what I'm gonna wear, where I'm gonna live, uh, the necessities of life, the things that are important for life. He said, all these things will be given to you as well. So he sums it up again. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Jesus himself is saying to you and me, in the midst of your plan, seek first the kingdom of God. In the midst of everything else that's on the horizon, Seek first his righteousness. In other words, put God first. And in in the sense of that, Jesus is saying, put me first. But before everything else you're concerned about, be concerned about your relationship with me. Put me first in everything in your thinking, in everything in your affections, and in everything in your doing. And all this other stuff, I'm telling you, all that's gonna be added, all that's gonna be given, all that's gonna come. If you make the primary decision, I'm gonna seek first the kingdom of God. I'm first gonna seek him. So Jesus is inviting you today, he's inviting me today to seek first a relationship with him, to seek the other world, not this world, to seek the spiritual world, not the natural world, to seek the eternal world, not the world that's passing away, and to seek its king, to say, I want in 2022 to know Jesus more. Now, I know that that can sound like a spiritual platitude, it probably would be on all of our lists somewhere because we're at church today for crying out loud. Yes, I wanna do this, we're gonna buy that house, we're gonna take this trip, we're gonna do this thing, but, and I wanna grow closer to Jesus this year as well. But I just want you to know today, it's totally possible that you and I could end this year being closer to the king and knowing more of the king And if we take him at his word, having everything else we needed in life added to us by a father who already knows today what we need and is working on it right now. So he says to us, oh, you can stop worrying about all that stuff because I've got all that. What you need to be focused on is just making me the center of everything in your thinking and in your affections and everything in your doing. We see this in this amazing story in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10. And this story is a story of Mary and Martha. Do you know that story when I say that? Um, Poor Martha, she always gets the knock from this story, but I wanna applaud Martha today because what it says in Luke 10 is that Jesus and his disciples came into this town. 
And when they came into the town, Martha came to Jesus and invited them all to her house. We don't know how many them was, Jesus and the disciples, okay? We know about how many that is, right? But maybe there were a few extras along the way. And she just said to all of them, hey, come to my house. I'll take care of all of you. So if it wasn't for Martha's generosity of spirit, for her belief in the kingdom and in the righteousness, if it wasn't for her doing what Jesus had said, do seek first the kingdom, which is, I don't know what else I got going on today, what my other plans were, but Jesus and his crew are coming by, so come and stay at my house. So can we just applaud Martha for a minute today? Because if she didn't do that, we don't even have a story. But she always gets the short end of this story because as Jesus is in the house, you understand how the story goes, right? Martha is trying to manage it all. So she's busy. And her sister Mary is just sitting and hanging out, listening to Jesus, just eyes locked on Jesus, focused on what Jesus is saying, not wanting to miss the moment that Jesus is at our house. And so she's trying to, you know, soak up every bit of the opportunity of having the king in her house. Meanwhile, Martha is frustrated and says to Jesus, "Um, could you maybe uh, assist here because there's a whole lot going on and my sister isn't being very helpful. And Jesus looks at Martha and he says, Martha, then he says it again. That's not good when Jesus says your name two times. Martha, (laughs) Martha. He said, you're so busy with so many things. But then I want you to notice what he says. I wanna, I wanna read it word for word from him because it's so important that we not miss this today. This is the way he responds. He said, you're worried and upset about many things. See how we're kind of tying back into what he was saying in Matthew 6. A, you're worried, and and that got you upset. Those two things always seem to go together. But only one thing is needed. So he's, he's zeroing in on the important thing. He's not saying the other things are, you know, incidental. We all are gonna need to eat tonight. We all are gonna need to sleep somewhere. We all do need a roof over our head, but... There's something greater than all of that. He says there's only one thing that's needed. And this is the line I want us to focus on. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Man, that is the phrase. That is the line. That is what's burning inside of my heart. That is what I want to be said about me in this year, that I chose what was better. And what I got by choosing what was better, I cannot lose. I made the choice of what is better, and the reward of making that choice was what I got cannot be taken away from me. I sought first what was best. Now there are two things in this text that I want us to see and then I wanna talk practically at the end just so that we can get our feet moving in the right direction as we start this journey together. Two things in this text are important. Number one is he says, Mary has chosen what is better. In other words, this did not happen by happenstance. Mary did not get into this position by neutrality. She made a decision, she chose what was best. And I wanna encourage us today in that, that there are a lot of things out of our control right now, but you still have the most important power to set the direction of your life. And nobody can take that away from you. No circumstance, no climate, no economy, no whatever's happening in the world, nobody else, no relationship, no friendship, no up, no down. No one can take that away from you. You have the ability today to make a choice. But in making that choice, we have to understand today, and we were encouraged so much in this last week, that this prize requires determination. 
In other words, knowing the king more will not happen out of neutrality. It only happens out of determination and it's gonna require for me that I prioritize, that I press, that I pursue, and that I persist. And I wanna just say that today, God has already done all the prioritizing that he can do. He's already done all the pressing he can do and all the persisting that he can do and all of the pursuing that he can do. He, he can't pursue you any more than he's already pursued you. He cannot persist further than he's already persisted. He cannot prioritize a relationship with you any more than he's already prioritized the relationship. So here's what he's saying to me today and what he's saying to you. The ball is not in God's court for you to know him more. The ball is in your court for you to know him more. It's not up to God today to decide, you know what, I really love her, and in 2022, I, I want to know her more. He's already prioritized, persisted, pursued. He's already done all of that. The ball is in my court. What an amazing thought. The ball for 2022 of whether I know the king better and am closer to him is in my court. And here's the best part of all, I can make the play if I want to. I can make the decision and the choice if I want to. I think the second thing that is important in this story is that we understand that it's not an either or. And that's what always happens in this story. It always ends up uh, with the busy people and with the I make time for Jesus people, with the, the workers and with the resters. And it's always a, you know, sort of like a dichotomy at the end of the story. Jesus isn't trying to build a big dichotomy. There was another time when Jesus was uh, glorified on the Mount of Transfiguration and it was so powerful and awesome that a few of his disciples said, this is the best thing we've ever seen. Uh, we're gonna build a, a temple right here and we're just gonna stay here on the mountaintop. And Jesus said, no, we're not staying here on the mountaintop. We got work to do, let's go. So it's not like, oh, it's better to not work and to sit at Jesus' feet. No, it, that's, that's not the point he's trying to make. The point that Jesus is trying to make, and this is where this message really lands with me, probably gonna really land on anybody like me that works in a ministry or works at a church or works in some Christian organization, this, this message is gonna land on you in the same way as this story of Martha and Mary. What Jesus wants us to see in the story is it's not either do we work for God or do we sit with God. That, that's not really the question. The question is, have I missed the king because I'm too busy working for the kingdom? That is a question Jesus wants all of us to come to terms with for 2022. You say, well, Louis, he, he just said, seek first the kingdom and the righteousness. So we should be like Martha, very busy about the kingdom. No, Jesus said when he was asked what's the greatest commandment, he said that's easy, that goes all the way back to Deuteronomy 6, that's the Shema, what the Jewish mindset would know. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one and you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. Jesus didn't say love the kingdom with all of your heart. He said love the king. Why? Because the king is the kingdom. <laughs> he is the center of it all. And he's painting a picture for us and he's saying it's possible that you can have a great heart and be really busy doing all the right stuff and not even realize that the king is in your house. And so, yes, do the stuff. Yes, take care of everybody. Yes, take care of the city. Take care of your family. Take care of yourself, for crying out loud. And take care of the world. And be about your father's business. But don't miss the fact that while you're doing all that, the king is 
near and he's inviting you to make a choice, a decision to say, I wanna seek first the kingdom of God and seek first the king of the kingdom. That is on my list of the things that I wanna do in 2022. If you're resonating with that, let me put a few handles on, and I'm not gonna try to put it in a formula today, but just a few handles. Number one, I want us to think about the long arc of the year ahead. So this is not a resolution message. This isn't a for the next eight days or the next four months or um, you know, for this little window of time, here's what we're gonna do. I want us to think, not pretentiously, because we don't know if we even have tomorrow, but I want us to think under the grace of God about the long arc of 2022 so that we don't all like set our affection on fire today and then in an hour from now, we're like, oh yeah, the whole thing about getting to know Jesus better this year, I don't really see that happening. This is a long arc. This is like the Matterhorn. This isn't something you do in a day or even decide to do in a day or can do in a day. This is something you gotta go spend a year working on, right? So I want us to think about the long arc of the year and not get all frustrated and all anxious and already start having the fear failure, fear of failure syndrome set in before we even take one step. We're talking about a long journey this year. You don't have to get it all right today. You don't have to get it all right this week. You don't have to get it all right in January. You don't have to get it all right, period. We just want to move in a direction toward the king. The second thing, the second handle I wanna put on is this. I wanna encourage you that if this is in your heart, that you acknowledge your desires and your fears to God. In other words, might take out your journal and write God a letter or just take out a note card and write God a letter and tell him what you want. Might just wanna go on a walk and tell him what you want, but I think writing it down is pretty powerful because you have it. You have it next week, next month, four months from now, eight months from now. You can refer to it. You can read it to him every day. You can read it as often as you need to, but write down to God and just tell him, God, I wanna know you more. I don't even really honestly know what that means because I'm saved and I know that and I love church, but church sometimes like going to a concert, it's like I know a lot about the person on stage and I love their music. But that's not the same as having a relationship with the Almighty and that's what he is inviting you into. And so just tell them, I don't even know what this means. I, I don't know if I'm going to be good at it. I, I don't know if I'm going to succeed. I, I, I have some sense that I might fail. I, I don't, I'm not good at following through on things. Write it all down and tell him what you want. God, I need you to help me with this. I, I, if it's just up to me, I, I don't even know where to start. So I just want to tell you, I do want to know you more. I do want to be more in a relationship with you, but I don't know fully exactly how to do that. Go to Psalm 27, seven and say what the psalmist said. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, O oh Lord, I will seek. Maybe that's the line that needs to be on the top of the letter. Your face, O oh Lord, I will seek. Not your hand. I am gonna need you to help me this year. Not your muscle. I am gonna need that this year. But I'm gonna seek your face. Not for what you can fix, but for who you are. A third handle for me is to set the direction with structure and spontaneity. See, we, we always gonna figure out, am I the spontaneous guy? Like, I'm gonna be in the relationship with Jesus when you know I feel the moment, or are you the structure person? I need a devotional guide, I need a journal, I need the right place, I need the right amount of time, I need it on my schedule. I'm the structure guy, I'm the spontaneous guy. No, I think God has created all of us to need structure, 1,000%. But he's also created all of us with a desire and a need for some spontaneity. And so I, we'll talk more about structure because we're gonna need that. You're gonna need some routine. You're gonna need some ritual, all the things that spontaneity people don't wanna hear and all the structure people say, yeah, that's what I need right now. So I'm ready. I, I wanna do this. What's the routine? What's the ritual? What's the plan? How do, how do we make this work? I'm just putting handles on today that you're gonna need some structure and some spontaneity. 
Um, a couple of years ago, uh, Lates, one of the guys on our team and myself, we were flying to the Middle East and we had a layover in Paris. And if you've ever been in the airport in Paris, it's not that spectacular necessarily. And so we're like, okay, we got five hours to sit here or we could go see Paris. And Leighton had never been to Paris before. And I thought, well, we're not sitting in here if you've never been to Paris. So we're out, you know, through security, out of the airport, into a car. And before you know it, we are right there. We're down the Champs de Lisée. We're seeing the Arc de Triomphe. We're at the Plaza Vendôme. We're seeing the Louvre. We've seen the Seine River. We are now looking at the Eiffel Tower. We're having um, hot tea and a little courtyard of a hotel that Shelly and I love, and we're experiencing a little bit of Paris, not a lot bit of Paris, because we gotta get back in the car and get back to the airport and go back through security, and you know, so we've navigated customs, gotten out of the system, gotten into a car, gotten onto the freeway to spend a little bit of time experiencing a city in the moment of spontaneity because we could. And that's what God is wanting from me and you this year. Yes, there's gonna be need, need to be structure, but there's gonna need to be moments where we say, you know what, I've got an hour. I just realized I've got an hour. So I'm gonna, in this hour, prioritize spending time with Jesus. You know why? Because I can. I, I just got 45 minutes and uh, I, I'm gonna take a drive. I'm gonna go on this drive that I really love or I'm gonna go on this walk or I'm gonna go down by the riverbank. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get somewhere that inspires me and I'm going there with the purpose of spending time with the king. Another handle, and I really believe this is something Jesus loves, is I'm gonna commit to making space and then I'm just gonna ask him to fill it. See, I think a lot of the times we create the space and then we fill it. Oh, here, here's what I'm about to do. I'm supposed to spend time with God, so I've got 20 minutes and I've got all this thing I'm gonna do. And I think sometimes the king just says, just ask me to allow you to sense that I am with you and then follow that nudge. I might just sing a song of worship. I might just sit here and write to you what comes to my heart. I, I feel like I wanna get into your word and, and connect with your truth. I wanna just sit, just sit. I don't have to talk the whole time. I could just be with you and say, Jesus, I'm here. Let's be here together. Can you imagine what that would do to his heart? That's it. You just want to be with me. Yeah, I just want to be with you. A couple more handles quickly. And this is gonna be for somebody, and I don't know who you are, but it's important today for you to believe in the good intention of God's heart. I wanna read this from Psalm 34, which is a psalm that I would encourage you to get into the early rhythm of your year, meditate on it, pray through it, but verse 10 says, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord, those who seek the Lord, not those who are sitting back in, in the zone of paralysis and neutrality saying, I don't know, you know, I don't have control over my life. I, Everything that's happened to me hasn't been the way I've wanted. I'm not really that in control of all of my circumstances right now. And he's saying, look, here's one thing you are in control of. Do you want to put in the time, the effort, the energy to pursue the God who has already put in all the time, the effort and the energy possible to pursue you? Do you want to move the ball out of your court and into play? Do you wanna be one of these people who seek the Lord? You see that? 
That's the nature of the gospel. Ask, knock, seek. In other words, all the good stuff isn't on the bottom shelf. Uh, all the best stuff isn't in the little quip on the back of the book. You, you gotta dig a little, you gotta press a little, you gotta climb a little, you gotta sacrifice a little, you gotta feel it, you gotta want it, you gotta go after it, you gotta prioritize it, you gotta seek it. And say all these things, these are all necessary and I'm gonna care for all of them, but I'm gonna seek First, the face of the king. And you know what he says about you, if that's you? He said, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. That requires for somebody here that you Believe that if you prioritize God, the good intention of his heart is gonna turn your way. Somehow the enemy has gotten in the story, convinced you that God isn't good, that God doesn't care, that God won't come through, that God doesn't love you, that God doesn't want the best for you, that God doesn't wanna spend time with you, that God doesn't even really like you all that much. He tolerates you, but that's about it. And this is all a lie from the pit God values you and he wants to shower you with the good intention of his heart. And he said, if you will seek me first, everything else you need in life, trust me, stuff you don't even know you need in life, stuff that you think you need that you don't need, it's gonna be replaced by stuff you didn't even know you need that you realize, oh, that's what I really needed. Why? Because my intentions are good. Two more. I think an important handle as we start this journey together is to seek after him in the unchanging word, not in my evolving emotions. Remember the long arc of 2022. Your, your emotions are gonna be all over the map this year. You're gonna wake up some days full of faith, some days full of doubt. You're gonna wake up some days full of joy, some days full of sorrow. You're gonna wake up some days and you're gonna think, okay, I got a direction. You're gonna wake up other days and go, man, I don't even know what life is. And it's gonna be all over the map. And if that is your seeking, then you're lost. But if you can press through your emotion, just like going up the Matterhorn, you, you don't go up on the day you feel like it. You don't train on the day you feel like it. You don't pay the price on the day that you feel like it. You do that every day, whether you feel like it or not. And then one day you stand on the top and you go, man, this is the most amazing thing, <laughs> blowing my mind beyond what I could have even imagined. And it's just like that in pressing on to know the Lord. And so when you wake up and you go, I don't even know if there is a God, but you know what I'm gonna do today? I'm gonna seek him. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. Lord, I'd just like to come in honesty today and go, I don't even know what's up today and I don't even know what's down, but I'm coming to seek my king in the pages of something that doesn't change even though my emotions are all over the map. And then lastly, and I think this is gonna be really big for us in the next few weeks together, to move toward God with both your affection and your allegiance. We're gonna look more at this in the weeks ahead, but in John 14, Jesus says something very interesting. He said, if you love me, you'll obey me. And if you obey me, I'll show you more of me. He says it two different times, two different ways. People who obey me, my father, he makes his home with them. In other words, I don't, just want you to come with your affection and say, I wanna know you, God. I wanna love you, God. I wanna love you with all my heart and all my soul. I wanna love you, God. He's saying, I want to know you and I do already love you, but the way you're gonna know me is when you come both with affection for me, when there is emotion and love and heart and soul in the mix, 
But when you align yourself with me, you come with allegiance with me, you come and say, I'm with your kingdom, I am with your righteousness, I am with your way, I am with you, Jesus. Whatever you wanna do, that's what I wanna do. Wherever you stand, I stand. Whatever you say, I say. Whatever you believe, I believe. I line up my life. Not just my theological framework, my being, my doing, my life. I want to align it to you. You can't be over here doing your own thing going, I really want to know the king. You got to get over here and get in alignment with the king because the king requires and implies that there is a king dumb. And to be in the kingdom is to say there is a king. And if there is a king, then that means I am not the king. So I want to get in alignment with the king and the kingdom. And that's going to mean all of us coming across the table of negotiation to surrender. To say to know you, I know requires that I have to raise the white flag of me because I believe there's nothing greater than thee. Seek first the kingdom. More specifically today, seek first the king. Everything else, 2022, trust him. He already knows about all that. The decision that you have your hands is to say, if the ball's in my court, I'm putting it in play today, and I'm going up that mountain in 2022. I'm going up with the king.